Hey everybody, Raul here for Bass Musician Magazine, and today we have the extraordinary honor and pleasure of chatting with bassist, composer, producer, and educator, Kira Moser. Yay! Hi, hello everybody. <laughs> it's so great to have you here today, Kira. As always, we like to talk about the past and how you got started in music and on bass. How did that happen? Well, my first instrument was actually the violin. I started when I was two and a half, and my parents were always very eager to kind of expose me and my two younger brothers to music, not only because we're blind, like two of us are blind, but actually because generally music is a very important part of society and should be more part of our education so like they were for them it was always really important so at a very young age i started with the violin and then pretty much because they were super open to like giving me every opportunity that i wanted to try or every instrument that i wanted to try they pretty much like organized for me to take a lesson like if i showed interest in piano it was like oh yeah do you want to try some piano lessons and that's how I kind of got into piano at eight and then yeah of course I did like you know this typical stuff that kids learn in school like in Austria you learn recorder very early but mm. you know not really a serious thing and then later my violin teacher actually got me into more improvised music through having me play with one of the guitar the electric guitar teachers at my music school and because I had a lot of fun like playing more improvised stuff because all Everything I did on the violin was more like classical content. So she introduced me to like a little bit of improvising. And then I had so much fun that actually we kind of started a band with my brothers and I and two friends of the family that we called Blind Brats. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like 13 or 14. And we discovered a band needs a bassist. And we discovered, oh, yeah, actually, on every song, there's bass if you want to play like pop and contemporary music. Yeah. And so I ended up taking the role of the bass because not every song needs a violin. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I actually started really falling in love with it, especially when I um, started a high school that was specialized on pop music. And it's funny because I was actually going to go to a, a high school that was specialized on business, which is also great and important. But kind of last minute, my band teacher, like we had like a teacher who came around every two weeks to like coach us a little bit. He was like, why don't you go to that high school? So, yeah. And there I really started off playing with other bands. I had like my first funk band called Round Corners and I started to get into some fusion and I really started to like fall in love with the actual role of the bass. Very cool, very cool. Well, yeah. and you were so fortunate because you went to Austria, where I know they have a very strong uh, belief in musical education, which, again, it's a rather unfortunate that nowadays that seems to be an area where there's a lot of cuts in the lower school areas that they, they're, they're cutting that out. So mm -hmm. following that, though, you went on to go to pursue much further studies Tell us a little bit about that journey. In high school, when I, I started to play with more professional bands, I also attended like jazz and big band workshops because, as you said, the education system there is, is really good, especially for classical music. But they're starting to have a lot more opportunities also for young adults to play jazz. So, yeah, I went to those big band workshops and I started to get more into like complex music and all my friends from high school and from like the, the workshops that I attended, they wanted to go study to to Vienna, which is basically the city, city with the biggest music scene in in Austria. And so I was like, okay, cool. I want to keep playing. I'll just you know audition for for college. And also in Austria, the whole system is a little bit different. Actually, the public universities are the ones that you want to get into, and the private ones are like you pay kind of a a bunch of money, and for the public ones you don't. And the public ones like universities also kind of they actually accept less people. So it's harder to get in and it's better to have a degree from there. Wow. That's actually also kind of interesting about the education system. So, yeah, I got in there and I did a teaching degree, an undergraduate. And then I actually randomly just 
was googling Sibelius for blind people because is that all of the music software like Pro Tools, Sibelius, Logic, everybody in Austria kept telling me that I can't use it. So I was kind of looking for ways around it. And I just found this course on Google that a blind person teaches at Berkeley. Uh, his name is Chi Kim. And it's a course where you learn how to use all of that music software as a blind person. And for me, that was a complete mind breaker because like, I couldn't write down my own compositions. I like wrote everything in my head. For example, at university in Vienna, I wrote a whole big band arrangement in my head and then I dictated it to a friend of mine. So for me, that was completely crazy. So, and it's the only place that the were in the world where a blind person actually teaches that to blind musicians at Berkeley in Boston. So I was like, okay, I know where I have to go to. And funny enough, that course is only an elective. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even like, so it's just like when you go to Berkeley, you have that course if you're blind. Yeah. So for me, that was like, okay, I wanted to study abroad anyways. And it was always my dream. And so Berkeley was the place to go. And so I like auditioned for a lot of different, you know, I, I tried to get in through many different ways. I ended up doing the five week program. It was like a special program with Terry Lynn Carrington, where we played in an ensemble with her and got like amazing like workshops and lectures done by her and also other amazing women in jazz. Mm -hmm. And then I did one semester in the undergraduate program where I afterwards heard about the Global Jazz Institute which is basically the institute where I did my master's in performance. It's like a one year master's program and they accept 20 people and it's fully paid and it's a performance master's where you work with artists like John Paditucci, Danilo Perez, Joe Lovano, Tia Fuller, like all of those amazing people on a weekly basis. So you'll always have a guest artist coming in for one week and it's about not only performance, but also the program is about music and social change. So the change we can make in society with music. And so for me, that was like super clear because I know that a lot of times people like seeing me, they will be intimidated by blindness or like by me being different or something. So I knew that I wanted people to not only accept me as a musician, but also as a person. And so I saw that program as a really important opportunity because it's not only about the musician you are, but also about the person you are and what you can contribute. Wow, that's just, it's, it's incredible. I think it, it's especially important. Music in itself, I recently saw a, a TED presentation where they were talking about what happens in a musician's brain, and they've been doing studies. And yeah. they, they compared it to like fireworks. I mean, when people listen to music, they'll have areas of their brain light up. But musicians, their whole their whole brain is is like lit up in that in activity, and it's it's such a, a wonderful thing, and yeah. it's so so incredible that you've been able to again you surmounted the obstacles and set an example. I think for many people who might want to pursue something like that. Yeah, and generally, I think like there are so many studies that show that music heals and that music is important in so so many ways more than just musicians playing but also you know for the whole society and and for for everybody pretty much indeed indeed yeah and you recently had your album released at your debut album on october 20th of just last year titled blind so what tell us a little bit about that project yeah so i've been playing a lot in like you know different projects starting from world music to jazz to pop to rock anything you can any style you can imagine and i really enjoy working with all kinds of different people but definitely since i started uh, considering a career in music i wanted to pursue my own project and also like write and compose my own music and for me it was always like important to like also have my own musical voice out there in the world and also as a bass player and directing a band like yeah it was always one of my dreams so I kind of was looking for a way to like combine the whole concept of me fostering equality and inclusion but also like standing out there as an artist because for me like the primary thing that's important 
is being an artist and being a bass player. Mm -hmm. But also I know that like through standing out there and being in public, I convey an uh, inclusion or mes message that's <laughs> really, really important. So yeah, um, I feel I started the idea of the project at the Berkeley Global Jazz Institute because where I did my master's, because you have the opportunity to record some tunes at the studio and you do a research project that is connected to what you record in the studio. So you can pretty much choose anything related to culture, social change, or jazz and music, ethnomusicology in general, but it has to be like connected with what you compose, which is cool because you actually start thinking about composing with a purpose. And so for me, it was clear that I would connect my project with either like disability or in particular blindness. So what I did is I composed music that I really can relate to as a person, like that I like to play as well, like in terms of, you know, having fun on bass, <laughs> mm. like, and then also, I looked for topics that relate to both my life as a blind musician, but also as a blind person. So, uh, and about each of those topics, I, I composed a song. So for example, uh, one topic is memorizing. For the blind person aspect, I have to memorize every way I walk. Or for example, I also have to memorize where I put all my things, right? Mm -hmm. Because I can't just look around the room and be like, oh, where is this? But also in music, as a musician, I have to memorize uh, all the songs I play. So I don't read any lead sheets or anything. Like I can write music in Sibelius, but then, of course, when I'm playing, my hands are occupied, so I can't read it. So I memorize everything. Yeah, and topics like that. So I came up with like eight, nine topics. And I did this research project where I actually discovered those topics and also talked to other blind people. Um, and then I composed some of the tunes during my master's, but also some of the tunes later inspired also through touring and traveling with Danilo Perez, who is like the artistic director of the Institute. And he like fosters a lot, like he does a lot for music and social change. And um, yeah, he definitely also inspired a lot of this album. And yeah, that's the whole idea about the album actually. I know this started primarily, I know there was a podcast before the album was released. Mm -hmm. And it is. It, I think that gives you an opportunity to talk a little bit about it. But the music definitely talks all on its own. And I was going to ask as well, because you have also a role as an educator, because you've made so many strides for yourself. And this is these amazing achievements. Are, are you primarily involved in, in teaching other blind musicians or musicians in general? Well, for me, it's not about teaching the blind. It's about teaching everybody, mm -hmm. um, being an educator. Because if I would only be teaching the blind, I would go exactly against what I stand for. So, And I also believe that we have to work on inclusion in many different ways and approach it from many different angle points and viewpoints. Because I can help every blind person in this world if I want to or I can try to, but it still won't uh, create inclusion. Mm -hmm. So I definitely like also do a lot of stuff with teaching, you know, anybody sighted and blind. For sure. example, I just started to develop to develop a curriculum that is actually based on the concept of the album, where some of the topics, like for example, memorizing, I do like master classes on memorizing music, but also I teach completely, I teach completely like regular bass classes. Well, regular because I mean I also have of course a different approach to like. To like knowing where I am on the base, so mm -hmm. like to seeing the fretboard and, and visualizing the fretboard in a way. So of course, like it, it is different to study with me, but I do base classes and I teach. I did some some teaching for um for Berkeley as well. Like I did some workshops, uh, the Victor Wooten base workshops and five week programs. So I do teach uh, regular base students, and I feel like it's been. A really interesting journey also for them to have a little bit of a different approach but at the same time it's still the same approach because music is music and we all perceive music through our ears and it's always going to be music for everybody no matter if they see or not if, if they have a disability or a disability or not absolutely 
And this is probably a good moment to ch ask a little bit about how you're getting your sound. What instruments, what gear are you playing on? So I play a Fodera bass. It's a Emperor 6 string, Emperor Standard 6 string. And I started on an Ivaness, then switched to a Fender Jazz bass that was still a 4 string. And then I think one year after I started studying, I, I drove to this guitar house in Augsburg. They sell like 800, they have like 800 guitars, 600 wow. basses. And I tried a lot of stuff. And to be honest, I would have probably still purchased the Fodera if it was a, a five string, but happily it ended up to be a six string because the six string has so many opportunities. Although I still love playing four in certain contexts or five, like depending what instrument is there, but like it's the six string is the only instrument I have right now. And I really, really love it and i i just love the sound of it and what i do is like well i believe that most of the sound comes from the fingers because for me also like when i go into a situation where i don't know the amp um of course if it's like like a gig or something and i have somebody who's helping me with like the sound and everything i can ask oh what does this knob do on the amp but mostly i walk into the rehearsal room and I don't know the situation. So basically I have to try to figure it out by ear. And definitely most of the sound comes from, you know, the fingers. And also, actually I studied with Mike Pope, who was who was the designer of that preamp. And it saved me a lot of times because I can just put the EQ of the amp that I'm using flat. And then actually the bass will figure out the rest <laughs> in most of the cases. Sometimes I have to like maybe help with boosting a, a, a few mids or lowering bass, depending on like what kind of amp it is. Um, but yeah, and I have, uh, in terms of amps, I mainly play Mark Bass amps, um, just because I feel like it's amazing because they're so light, and I I do like the sound because it's a very like neutral sound. Um, and yeah, for effects, I honestly don't use so many things. I just have been playing around with a multi effect device by Zoom called B6 because I have a bunch of pedals, but I actually also like the idea of having it in one device, and I feel like it's really becoming a thing now. Yeah, that's all I can say about my sound, but I think it really it's us we define the sound like the instrument is just a tool and we're actually the people who make the sound through playing very cool and do you have a particular preference in strings especially because the sound is coming from your hands i use the adario the nickel strings also they they, they have some kind of they detune uh like they're less likely to detune so i i really of them and actually i've been trying some but i have actually pretty much been sticking with them since pretty much the beginning of of that base because every every time i tried something else i wasn't really loving it gotcha. <laughs> but yeah i'm open to other to other equipment and to trying out stuff definitely nice nice and as we look ahead what are your plans for the future what's in the works well, definitely a new album is in the works. And also I am thinking of some research projects of how disability has been treated in different cultures and different countries and possibly writing music about that. It hasn't really taken shape yet, but I'm definitely also working on some new music, not even related to that necessarily. Mm -hmm. So I'm hoping to record this year and maybe next year will be a release a day but there's nothing out yet about that but yeah definitely working on that and also working on getting some shows of course around the world but also for this year in the u.s especially because i've just been on an austria tour last year that went really well uh, nearly all the shows were sold out and it was a great time and generally as an artist i just really my dream is to travel with different projects definitely travel with my own projects keep releasing my own music but also tour and travel with different projects and keep also educating people around the world about bass playing about music and blindness kind of like also clinic based maybe or residency based but there are a lot of stuff that i have in the works also including uh i'm thinking of 
creating some kind of mentorship program for musicians with disabilities. So yeah, there are a lot of ideas flying hmm. around my head and I'm just trying to like kind of compensate everything and figure out ways to make it work. And I'm really, really excited for what's going to come in the future. Very nice. And if people want to know what you're up to, where's the best place for them to look? So probably the best place is either my website, which is www.kira-moser.com or my social media where probably Instagram, just my last name and then my first name. So at Moser Kira, just written together without any capital letters. Yeah. And then, of course, check out the album on Spotify or anywhere you like to stream music. Excellent. Well, Kira, we're very excited for this album and for future projects. And it's been so great to hear your story. It's very inspiring. And I hope that people that hear this will take, you know, certainly check out your work and listen to your music and, you know, kind of have a new perspective when it comes to blind people and bass playing and music in general. So thank you so much for sharing all that. Folks, you've seen her here today on Bass Musician Magazine, Kira Moser. Thank you. Mm -hmm.